Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Oregon Run Weekly Recap Show number one. I'm Joel from Endurance Evolution, and today we're just going to spend a few minutes together going over a little bit of what's happened in the previous, let's see, about 14, 15 days or so in the 2020 Oregon Run. So hopefully all of our connections are working well, audio is going well. If you can't hear me for some reason, uh, go ahead and let me know. Um, I was having some trouble with the AirPods earlier on the testing, but um, I believe everything should be good. I see Nick has logged in. Nick, good to see Nick. Nick says, woohoo, all right. Um, we'll get right underway here and I'm going to pull up the results from the Oregon Run website. So if we just do a little switcher here. We're going to head over to the Oregon.run, and I'm going to head to the results page. So we've got three courses currently happening concurrently. We've got the gorge route, the coast route, and the high desert route. And the high desert route and the coast route started on the 23rd of May, so a couple weeks ago. The gorge route, those folks started only on the 7th of June, excuse me, 7th of June. So they only started about four days ago or so, um, but they have a little bit less distance to go. They started in Hood River and they're headed along the Columbia River Gorge towards Astoria like everybody else. But let's take a look first at the high desert results and, uh, and see what everybody is doing there. So I just want to point out first before we get too deep into this that there are still a few bugs with the results that we're seeing on the web page here. Uh, and there are there's a good reason for it. The first real reason that we're having bugs is that Run Sign Up, which our website is powered by, created this entire results platform in about two or three weeks as this coronavirus pandemic was happening. And um, they they pushed it out to all of us really quickly, and then they've been kind of patching and fixing bugs as we go. So I have no hard feelings towards them. I feel pretty grateful that we've been able to implement this and get it going as awesome and as quickly as we can. Um, but let's take a look here and I'll show you kind of what some of the bugs are and what the standings are so far as well. If we look at the high desert route, we've got Scott in first place here, Tony in second, and Ariane is in third. If we look at the rankings here, the way results are ranked is by, first of all, currently most total mileage, and then if anybody happens to have the exact same total mileage, the tiebreaker is who's done that total mileage in the faster time. So we see Scott here is logged 205 miles, just over 205 miles. He's 59%, excuse me, he is 37% of the way through the course. Uh, and then if we go down, Tony has logged 204 miles, just over 37% as well. So these, uh, these guys are pretty close here. And then Ariane is not too far off with 193. So the way they're ranked currently is by who's done the most mileage. Doesn't matter how fast you've done it in the uh, clock time, we just wanna know who's, who's gotten the furthest so far. Um, the one little glitch we're having currently is uh, the age group results. And if you look over in the division place here, which is actually your age group, uh, you can really ignore these numbers. These numbers here um, are actually not correct, but the ranking and the way you show up in the results is correct. So let me explain what I mean by that. Let's take a look at Scott here. If we click on Scott, we will see a, a recap of Scott's activities here. You can scroll down and see what people have done for their specific activities. You'll see he's third place of three and male 45 to 59, but that can't quite be possible because he's only the second age grouper. The first three folks don't have uh, a place because they are in the overall category. They are pulled out of the age groups, if you will. So they don't get to double dip and be leading the age groups and be leading the entire race as well. So um, so why is Scott third in his age group when he is actually, as we can clearly see, the first person in the male 45 to 59, uh, 45 to 49. And the reason is, is because the way this ranking system works is it is assuming that this race is a normal race, like a 5K, a 10K, a marathon, whatever, where everybody goes out and runs the same ranking is based on the fastest time for the age groups that is let me show you let's take a look at the male 45 to 49 there where uh we see scott so we look at the rankings here and we see scott is actually the first one on the list which is correct we've got scott first we got ben second and we got matt in third the placings over here are ranking who has run the fastest time, which is irrelevant because as we can see, Matt has only logged 39 miles. So he's obviously got the shortest time. 
And whereas Scott has logged 140 miles, he's got the longest time. So he's, you know, as far as time is concerned, got the most time. So that's why these are out of whack over here in the division place. But you can just ignore that number and just know that everybody is correctly placed in the ranking if you, as you look at it, one, two, three. So that's the deal with age groups there. Let's flip back over to the individual. And we'll go back to all results. And looking back here, once again, we've got folks all over Oregon, including Arizona. Uh, one of my good friends, Arianne Whitaker, is cranking it out in Tucson. Uh, where else do we have some folks? We got some folks up in Washington and folks all over Oregon. Now, the high desert route is our big, big race. If we click on Scott's profile here, we'll see that he is 205 out of 545 miles. So that is the entire distance basically across the diagonal of the state of Oregon from McDermott down in the southeast corner all the way up to Astoria. A um, long, long way to go. Uh, while we're here, I want to show you one real quick way that uh, you may have already figured it out. And I think I've mentioned it a few places on social media as a really quick way that you can log your miles without having to log into your profile every time. And that is if you go to your name, go to your results page like we've got right here, and you find your name right below your name and see a button that says log activities. If you click on that, it's going to ask you for an email address, your email address, or the last four digits of a phone number, your phone number, the ones that you use to register for the race. If you enter those in there correctly and hit authorize by phone, boom, you're logged in. You don't have to enter a password, a username, any of that stuff. It makes it super quick and simple to log your miles without having to make sure you're logged in or going and logging in every single time. So just know that you can go click on your name in the results list and click on the log activities button and it will bring this up and you can easily uh, authenticate yourself into your results there. So with the results, uh, dun, 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 dun. also I wanna point out real quickly, some folks weren't aware of how you can see a map of where you virtually are in the race so far. So I mentioned Scott is 205.18 miles in. You can see on the progress bar here, pretty cool we got a progress bar. Kind of a neat little feature, but I wanna make it a little bit more immersive and click on the view results with map button. We'll click on that. And then we can see actually where Scott's located. So here's where Scott started and everybody in the high desert route started to wait down here in the Southeast. And now Scott is somewhere. Let's zoom in a little bit and see where he is. So you can see he's somewhere along 26 there, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Let's go to the satellite view. Yep, in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I hope Scott has some entertainment along the way and is making it, uh, Making it, he's uh, you know almost to Bend, if you will. Then he's gonna turn north out of Bend, head up through Warm Springs, up past their government camp, like everybody else, just through Portland and on up to Astoria. So that's how you can find the map of where you're actually located uh, on the page here. Another cool feature is you can also look at a couple of folks at one time. If I click, uh, for example, Whitaker here, I was looking for my friend Ariane the other day, and click search. I've got Scott's info here. And then if I scroll down, I've got Arianne's info here. And now we can see both of them on the map here. So I believe if I tap on somebody, click on somebody, uh, maybe it's not showing them. But let's see, Arianne is at 193 miles. So she's slightly behind. So this one right here is Arianne. And just up in front ahead here is Scott. So kind of a cool way you can, um, we can't see that part of your screen. Oh, no. Oh. You guys, let me roll this up. Why is it not zooming in? Thanks for the comments there. I haven't seen the map yet. Let me see if my screen is freezing up here. I'll try refreshing that. We'll hide that. And I'll come back and say hello to everybody here. And we'll try showing that once again in the stream. Well, it looks like we're having a little bit of a technical issue with our screencast there, but I'll try showing that again in just a little bit here. Let me try refreshing that. What if we click on this? Ah, I see what's going on here. I had a different, uh, different tab show up. So what if I open this up in... 
here's what I'll do. I know what to do. I'll go like this and go like that. There we go. All right, so on the map here, uh, sorry about that. It opens up when you click on that view the map, it opens it up in a new window and I wasn't sharing that window on my screen here. But if we click on that map then, you'll see it on your own browser when you try it at home. You can zoom in and see actually where these guys are. Uh, like I was mentioning, Ariane is just a little bit there. If you hold the, uh, the mouse over, I can see Ariane is at 193.23 miles. And if I hold the mouse over the other icon, it shows Scott there at 205 miles, just a little over that. So you can see yourselves actually on the map, which is pretty cool. And again, you can find that right below your name. Uh, let me go back to the results here on the results web, web website. So if we click on Scott here, and then whoop, let's do this. So right below your name, uh, below your results here, you'll see a button that says view results with map. That's what you're gonna click and you'll be able to see the map of where you're actually located in Oregon virtually in the middle of your run. All right, so we've taken a look at the high desert hard cores. Let's go back to the next set of results here. And let's take a look at where our coast route folks are. These guys left from the California border same day on May 23rd, and they're making their way up the coast. We've got Patty in first place with 185 miles. And not too far back, we got Nick Richards in second place with 162. Celine is clocked in at third with 152 miles so far. And again, if we click on somebody's name here, we can view results with the map. It's gonna open it up in a new window. I'll bring it back to this window for us. And that's where Celine's located. We can zoom in a little bit. Just south of Florence there, it looks like. So north of Reedsport a little bit and making her way up north. So that's how you can see the map, which is a really neat feature. Uh, so it really kind of makes you feel like you're somewhere out there in Oregon and not just a bar running across the screen. Let's head back there to our results. All right, so we got a bunch of folks clocking in. Again, they are 52, Patty's 52% of the way done. So uh, moving along pretty well. Don't forget that we've got all the way until the end of August for everybody to get their mileage in. So plenty of time left. Don't feel like uh, like you're lagging behind if you're not up in the front with all these really, really uh, high mileage folks who are clocking the running and the walking miles. Let's take a quick look at the gorge route individual folks. These folks, again, remember, only started about four or five days ago. We've got Alan in first place. He's got, let's see, a total of... 19.75 miles in, Brenda in second with 17.5 miles, and is it Nana uh, with 13.45 miles coming in third place. So they're a little bit further down in the mileage, but they don't quite have as far to go. They've got, I believe it's 170, 160, 170 miles to make it to Portland. Um, and they will be arriving in Astoria just like everybody else. So that's a quick look at the top three or four in each of the results. I'm looking at the comment section here and Nick says, how do you show uh, multiple people on the map at the same time? Let me show you how to do that, Nick. And then Karen, I'll come to your next question. So let's see here. Let me go back over to the coast route. So I believe that's where Nick is in the high desert, I believe. You click your name, for example, and I'll make this a little bit bigger on your screen there. All right, so here's Nick. Right above your name, you can also search for a name or another bib number. So just pop in any name here. I know Ariane happens to be running Ariane Whitaker. I'll type search. And then down below your information, Nick, we'll see now Ariane's stuff there. And on the map then at the bottom of the screen, you'll see Ariane there and Nick together. 
So that's how you can show. And you can show more people if you want. All you have to do is search for more people up here. Um, they, have to, they have to be in the same route as you, uh, but you can add as many people as you want to that map. And then they'll just kind of show up in order here on the page like that. So Karen says her map has not shown up. Let me see. Um, Karen, I think there was maybe a bug um, on a couple of folks with, um, with one thing. And I'll follow up with you, Karen, offline um, about that. I think I know why that wasn't showing up. So I will get back to you, Karen, offline after the live recording here. But I am so glad to be providing the details for everybody. Um, let's see. What other comments do we have? The map's not showing up. We got all that taken care of. Excellent. Um, moving right along here, I want to pull up our Facebook page. So I'm going to pull up, um, for those of you that don't remember or don't know, we've got a Facebook group just for registered participants of the Oregon Run. If you visit the Oregon Run website and go to Race Details and click on the Facebook group 2020, click on this link here. And it will open up another window, of course. And uh, let me pull that back in here. And we've got folks interacting um, all over, uh, all over the state and all over the country. Uh, Tim has been posting a bunch of pictures. Um, so is, there's a picture from Melissa. Some nice photos from the run. There's Tim's got some owls. Where did you see that? Uh, his brother sent a cool photo. So Tim didn't actually take that photo. Celine was out at Silver Falls today. Beautiful area, Silver Falls. Tons of beautiful waterfalls out there. Um, a little bit jealous. Um, I'm locked down in Portland here, Celine. So we don't have quite as beautiful scenery as you might out there in Silverton. Uh, there's Melissa. So we've got a great bunch of folks that are sharing their experiences on the Facebook group here. So if you're not, uh, if you're not part of that, uh, again, you can head back to the race website and click on the race details and then Facebook group and you'll see the information for how to get to that right there. Uh, if you're not already a member, you'll have to request to join and I'll uh, approve you as soon as I can and you'll be off and running, no pun intended. So the Facebook group is a great way for you to, uh, to get involved and feel, again, a little bit more like you're running with people, even though we're all running our own things, running circles around our neighborhood or wherever you may be today. All right. Um, one aspect of the race that we really haven't, uh, haven't emphasized at all is um, the charitable aspect of the race. And we were so busy getting things up and running earlier in the race, and um, we're kind of moderating the race right now, and we've got a couple other events currently happening via Endurance Evolution, um, that I forgot to mention um, the OHSU Foundation. We've chosen them as our charitable partner for this event, and we'll be donating a portion of your registration fees to the OHSU Foundation. And in addition, um, as you can see over here, a handful of folks um, have donated um, themselves to, to our cause to be donated to the OHSU Foundation. So once the event is over, um, we'll see how much we've donated and we'll, we'll give a report back to everybody as to what we've been able to donate to the OHSU, so OHSU Foundation. But if you'd like to donate uh, a little bit more, and then uh, you can donate a printer or you can put any dollar amount you want in there from a dollar all the way up to a million bucks if you wanted really, really giving. Um, and you can just go ahead and submit that that way. So we're really stoked about that aspect of the race. All right, so coming up next in the Oregon run, as you know, we've already got the individual routes are, are underway. We've got the, pull this back up here. We've got the coast route, the gorge route, and the high desert route. Everybody's off and running individually. But there's a bunch of folks signed up for the relay. What about them? Well, the relay folks, we gave them a 30-day delay, if you will. We gave her so all the folks, all relays for all three distances, all three courses, they're going to start on June 22nd. So about 11 days from now is when they're going to start. They're going to run the same course in teams of two. And uh, they'll be chasing everybody down in the individual races to see if they can get to Astoria before you. Um, for folks that are in the relay race, you'll get in and log your miles the same way. And you and your partner, your teammates, results or, or mileage and times will be combined together into one score or one time, if you will. 
And so they'll be added up um, to make your team score so you can work collectively to make your way as a relay team to, uh, to Astoria. Doesn't matter if one person runs a lot, the other person runs a little, you just add it all together. Uh, you don't have to run a certain amount at all, no predetermined amount as to if somebody has to run a certain percentage of the miles or anything like that at all. So that's coming up next in about 11 days or so, like I said, and I'll send some more e emails out to you and some more info via the Facebook group. And uh, gang, that's about all I've got right now. If you've got any other questions, I'll see if you type them in here in the comment section. Otherwise, this video is being recorded and I will um, use it for customer quality control. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna post it to the Facebook page and it'll be there in case you couldn't tune in live today. You can watch this whenever you want in the future on the Facebook page and also on YouTube, we'll post it there as well. So if you happen to miss it today, don't worry. Um, or you missed something earlier in the video and you wanna see what I said, you can rewind, go back and watch it anytime you want. So gang, I'm so excited to have everybody involved this year for our inaugural Oregon run. Um, this is a new experience for us. We are a company um, that puts on regular, if you will, in-person running races, Endurance Evolution is. And to put on a virtual race like this, I'll tell you, was something we never thought we'd be doing um, about two, three months ago. So I'm um, really excited that we've had the reception that we have so far and uh, that you guys are all choosing to join us. And it's not too late to sign up. If you've got anybody that does want to sign up still, it is okay to sign up. Uh, their mileage won't start until the day that they sign up or they can't start logging miles until that day that they sign up. But there's still plenty of time to log miles and make your way from wherever you are, whether it's um, the coast route, the gorge route, the high desert route, all the way up to Astoria. So thanks for tuning in, gang. I hope your running or walking is going well. I'll see you on the Facebook group and I'll be back in another week or so, uh, maybe with another update about how things are going with the Oregon run. So keep running and walking, gang, and I will see you soon. Take care.